In my little triangle of uh, competitive um, strategic rivalry with the competition for the for the customers, uh, when I came back to the the lower left hand box, the people in my company, I said, "Look, I've been out there talking to the customers." I've come up with a service value equation. I'm going to boil it down to eight measurements. And so we call it the big eight of service excellence. And we just put it kind of in numbers. It got, went from small zero up to bigger uh, in a way. Uh, but the idea was first we're going to have zero errors. So we came up with a, a quick and crude way of uh, measuring errors per thousand line items. And we first did it, our estimation was about 70. Uh, within four weeks, we'd gotten it to 10. Within six months, we got it to five, and then we could guarantee it for everybody. But right away, we were guaranteeing it for the top you know, 10 customers. Uh, we had target rates for fill rates historically, but they were very crude, and nobody really measured them, and they were all inflated. I'll come back to that. But right away, just quick and dirty, I, just, I did the beef up program for the uh, the top 100 most popular picked items, which is an enormous amount of picks, actually. Uh, the next thing was to come up to do achieve 95% cycle count accuracy on A items. We didn't bother to count B, Cs, and Ds. We counted them once a year at inventory time. But it was very difficult to get 95% cycle count for fast-moving items because they they get disrupted so often. We could receive them wrong. We could put them away wrong. We could pick them wrong. We could enter data in and out of the machine incorrectly, and that would throw counts off. So this was, you know, how good are we at total housekeeping of our physical stuff and everything was in the right place? And we came up with a little button that had DIRTF for do it right the first time we sort of permeated everything that went through this this little drill then our number one niche of customers we had a 100 same day uh, receiving actually shipping um, so if it the order came in today it went out by the end of the day so customers would get it the next morning that was our number one niche our industrial accounts we'd say and when do you want to deliver it and had to have an alternative service process to make sure it went out on the day it needed to to hit the time the customer wanted it but the, uh, the same day receiving was about improving fill rates. As with cycle counts, a lot of times customers would call and ask for something, and maybe we had it in the warehouse, but it wasn't where it was supposed to, so we couldn't find it. So it was an unfilled order because it was temporarily lost. So cycle count accuracy boosted fill rates. Um, 100% same day receiving, what would happen is a huge slug of stuff would come in to be received, and it was all A-plus stuff. That's what we keep reordering. We don't reorder the Cs and Ds. They're so, so slow moving or collecting dust. So if we gang tackled, burned overtime, and everybody stayed late, uh, we could get that all put away, and the next day, fill rates would go up markedly across the board. Um, I already talked about 100% on-time shipping, um, and in a sense, we're at some point, we get guaranteed on-time delivery because UPS was 99% on-time delivery. Uh, a sixth thing was confirmation of all the details and all orders at order entry as possible. So if we time permitted, we'd say, look, let me repeat that back to you. You wanted French fries, chocolate shake, blah, 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 blah. And we were surprised at how often, particularly initially, no, that's not what I said. And to a certain degree, over time, the confirmations became more and more complete because to a certain degree, I think we were educating the customers. So they were saying, you know, I better know what I want because they're going to repeat back to me and I need to confirm that. So I'm not sure what was going on there, but that, uh, that became uh, less and less of a problem. Talked earlier about the callbacks. In other words, if they gave us an order earlier in the day, there was a deviation to call back on any subsequent order changes to make sure it was okay with them uh, and got huge brownie points for doing that. And then eight was very important, which is that if we should screw up in any way, deliver the wrong stuff, wrong price, whatever, we had a 24-hour heroic recovery promise. And uh, I'll talk more about that in the whole how do you achieve service excellence module or section that I plan to be doing uh, another week or two. Um, now, this is basic service brilliance. This is not extra services like doing a backroom program or a front room program or, or electronic order entry for bigger customers, etc. Um, and as we come up with extra services, the question would be, well, are they bundled into the price that we already charge the customer or we do it unbundled for a fee? Um, you know, do the AAA plus guys get, you know, free things and double A have to pay and single A have to pay even more. Um, those are contextual uh, questions you have to answer. And we'll come back and visit extra services a little bit later on. But that's a, an example of how you take 
a service value equation and boil it down to sort of metrics that everybody understands and everybody can believe. It's not, it's not me, the CEO, saying whimsically, I want this. It's pictures of these people on the wall. I went out and talked to them, and this is why they wanted these things and why these add up to what they want. And if we take care of them, they'll take care of us. Everybody understands that because everybody is a customer in their personal life, and nobody wants to be bad, bad, bad part of a bad service story. So it was, uh, it was very compelling. That's it. Thank you.